Welcome back everyone. We are gonna wrap up our initial section on the high level structure of working with private IP addressing and the structure of a virtual network by now talking about subnet delegation. In this lesson, we're gonna start off by talking about what subnet delegation is from a high level or conceptual overview. We will discuss how subnet delegation works, especially in relation to different types of Azure managed services. We'll then talk about the different implementation methods that are possible with subnet delegation. Talk about a special exam focus in which you will be expected to know which Azure networking services require subnet delegation. And we'll finish things off with a brief demonstration of one method of subnet delegation in action. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. So from a high level, what subnet delegation is, at least according to Microsoft's documentation, is the ability to inject a managed service, specifically a platform as a service service, directly into your virtual network. This means that you can designate or delegate a subnet to be a home for an external managed service inside of your virtual network. Or in other words, that external service will act as a virtual network resource, even though technically it is an external platform as a service service. So how exactly does this work? Well, the main thing you need to keep in mind is that there isn't a single method of implementing delegated subnets. It relies purely on the specific service we're trying to implement. However, there are a few key points that we do want to cover. Overall, a platform as a service service will delegate its own subnet inside of your virtual network. However, some of the constraints and boundaries of this delegated subnet depend on the service that we are injecting into our network. Some external managed services may have a specific naming standard for that subnet. As we'll learn about Azure Firewall later on in this course, Azure Firewall must sit inside of a delegated subnet called Azure Firewall Subnet. Also depending on the service, that service may be the only resource that is allowed to exist inside of that subnet. Some delegated subnet services can have other virtual machines exist also in that subnet. Other ones have to be the only resource in that subnet all by themselves. Overall, there are a number of advantages to working with delegated subnets with external services, which come down the ability to integrate that managed service within your virtual network as if it is a native resource, which includes being able to incorporate it with custom routes, using network security groups to manage network traffic going to that service, interacting with different hybrid connections to your virtual network, and it also enables private networking with those managed external services with your virtual network resources. Next, let's talk about how to implement subnet delegation. How exactly do we set up delegation for different managed services? Well, once again, it varies by the service, or in other words, my favorite answer, it depends. Different services have different subnet delegation methods. Some managed services, like the one we're gonna demonstrate in our demo, you will manually delegate a subnet in your virtual network as a delegated subnet. Some managed services will automatically create that delegated subnet for you, or at the very least, you would create a delegated subnet when you create that managed service. And like we mentioned before, some managed services require a specific subnet name for that service to work, and other ones do not. Quick hint or a little bit of a spoiler alert, most of the network services we are going to discuss in this course do indeed require a specific subnet name. Before we move on to our demo, you need to be aware that there's a specific exam focus in which you are expected to know which managed services, specifically networking services, do require their own dedicated subnet. Now, fortunately, you do not have to fish around or hunt for this information. Microsoft actually provides a handy one-stop shop or an at-a-glance reference in which they list a number of different managed services and they tell you whether or not it requires a dedicated subnet, like what you see on the right. The one we are most interested in is the network category, in which we have Application Gateway, VPN Gateway, Azure Firewall, Azure Bastion, and Network Virtual Appliances, and we can learn whether or not they do require a dedicated subnet like we have in the far right column. Now, this is going to be another one of those ongoing themes in this course, in which when we discuss these individual services, we will also reference the fact of whether or not it requires its own dedicated subnet and we are also going to attach to this lesson a link to that same resource you see on the right side for that at a glance reference so you can go ahead and refer to it on your own. Finally, let's go ahead and jump into a hands-on demonstration of one of our delegated subnet implementation methods in action. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly create a blank virtual network, and within that virtual network, we are going to create a subnet and assign it as a delegated subnet. 
After we create our delegated subnet, we are then going to create a virtual machine inside of that delegated subnet, and we're going to find out whether or not we can actually do so. The answer may surprise you depending on what service we're using. Let's go ahead and jump over to our Azure portal and find out. Okay, we are back in our Azure portal using the Azure Playgrounds. First thing we're going to do is quickly create our virtual network. We'll go to our search field up top, type in virtual network, create a new one. Now, in my experience, you have to first create the virtual network before you can either take an existing subnet and delegate it or create a new one. So we'll just go ahead and create a new one for now. Add our resource group, give it a name. The rest of our options will be fine as is. We have our IP addresses and our default subnet. Of course, that's also fine for now. We'll click on review and create. And then once validation passes, we will go ahead and create our virtual network. And that will complete here in just a moment. Okay, now that our virtual network is completed, let's go ahead and go into it and create two delegated subnets. And I will explain why we are creating two here in just a second. We'll go to virtual networks, go to my VNet, and we'll go to subnets. Now for this example, I'm gonna actually go ahead and create two separate subnets and we're going to attach them each to a different Azure managed service. We're gonna do this to highlight how some services allow you to create VMs inside of them and other ones do not. Let's go ahead and create a new subnet. I'm gonna give this a name of SQL subnet because we're going to attach it or delegate for a managed SQL instance. And on the far bottom right side, we have subnet delegation. We'll go ahead and hit our drop down menu here, type in SQL, and we're gonna go ahead and choose SQL manage instances and then click on save. Now that we have our SQL subnet, which is delegated to, we have our field here, delegated to Microsoft SQL Managed Instances. Let's go ahead and create one more. Go ahead and create a new subnet. I'm going to call this one ACI subnet for Azure Container Instances. Leaving everything else as is, we will go once again to our delegate subnet to a service. And I'll type in container. And I'm going to choose the Microsoft Container Instance delegation to container groups and then hit save. And that will complete here in pretty quick. Okay, so we have two new subnets. One is delegated to SQL managed instances and the other is delegated to container instances. Now, the reason that I chose these two specific services is that I happen to know that one of these services allows other virtual machines inside that delegated subnet and the other one does not. Let's find out which one that is. Let's now go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'll just type in virtual machine and we'll do that one there. Create a new one. And once again, I'm going to leave most of these settings as default, assign it to our resource group, give it a name of my VM. And next we will go to our networking settings. Underneath networking settings, we're gonna assign it to my VNet and we can choose which subnet to assign to. Notice of course, we can assign it to our default subnet. Notice, however, if I click the drop down menu, I can choose to also assign it to the SQL subnet. However, the ACI subnet, which is for Azure Container Services, is grayed out. And I get a little bit of a message saying the selected subnet is not supported. This is because Azure Container Instances do not allow you to create virtual machines in the same delegated subnet. However, managed SQL instances do allow you to create virtual machines in its delegated subnet. Now, these specific services are not going to be an exam point to memorize. That's going to focus on managed network services, but I did want to highlight the difference here just to show the different types of variety when it comes to delegated subnets. I'm going to go ahead and choose SQL subnet for this example, leave the rest of our options as is, click on review plus create, and then after validation, I will go ahead and create my virtual machine. Looks good to me. Click on create. Since this is a Linux machine, we'll get the prompt to download our key pair. I'm going to go ahead and do that just so we can go ahead and create the machine. And that'll take just a moment and it will complete. Okay, after a brief moment, our virtual machine is complete. I'm going to go ahead and go to resource. And we can see underneath our virtual machine overview, it is assigned to the SQL subnet, which is a delegated subnet for managed SQL instances. With that, that's going to go ahead and wrap up our demonstration on working with delegated subnets. Let's go ahead and quickly review the main takeaways before we close on out.
Wrapping things up on delegated subnets on Azure, we started off by learning how subnet delegation is the ability to inject a managed platform as a service service directly into your virtual network. Or in other words, an external managed service acts as if it exists natively inside of your virtual network. When it comes to configuration, it depends purely on the service. Some services require you to manually assign it to a subnet. Some services create that subnet for you. And some services also require a very specific naming format, whereas some others do not. From an exam perspective, you're going to be expected to know which managed services, specifically network services, require a dedicated subnet. And as we mentioned, there is an at a glance reference link that Microsoft provides for your own reference, which we will also attach to the lesson resources. So you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. And also keep in mind, we will be referencing those specific services and the requirements for a dedicated subnet as we talk about those services later on in this course. That's going to go ahead and wrap this lesson up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one.